you find the kids, you bring them back with you. Okay. 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 Yeah, there's a table. You understand that? Say again, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if you buy the kids, you bring them back with you. The notebooks you need to bring back with you also. Okay. Okay. The first part, there will be no questions. I'm just going through the architecture, pretty much following what's in the book. Out of all the things I've done. Raspberry Pi 3 B+. Plus. People played with it as a lot. this class once before, I made some minor corrections no. in it. Raspberry Pi 3 is a good little computer. It comes with four USB, internet, HDMI, video. USB ports theoretically can go to 480 megabit per second. For the, uh, they say the Ethernet can go 300, but it's not a big push in the But in theory, but can I do more than one thing? I'll write that now. So perhaps you could. It's an ARM 7. Actually, technically, it's an ARM 8 processor. But it, they have a few instructions left out, therefore they classify it as an ARM 7. It's just the name of the processor. Uh, it's Cortex A53. It, uh, it has a central processing unit, a GPU. Uh, just to let you know, two pages back is the layout of the chip. Uh, general purpose input output has a central processing unit, the, the GPU as I mentioned. It has one gigabyte of memory, it's placed on the bottom of the board. Yeah. Now, you have some limitations, one being it's one gigabyte of memory. But it can swap out memory pretty good. Uh, there were several predecessors, to give you a little history, the Pi, now known as models A, A+, plus, B, B+, plus, started in 2012, then followed by the uh, Pi 2, Pi 2 model B, Pi, Pi 2 model B+, plus, <laughs> and so on. Then the, uh, the B, Pi 3B, came out about two years ago. And last year they upgraded to the model B plus. Now to let you know there is a model Pi 4 in the works. They're looking at bringing in either 2 or 4 gigabytes of memory. It will not be this year. It will at least be next year. At least. Um, they are looking at separating the USB. The one chip controls the water. USB and the Ethernet. And they're discussing that. separating the chips yeah. so that the like Ethernet can be like faster. Um, yeah, yeah, as an example, if you're doing communications on the USB, on it right slows down the communications yeah. on the Ethernet. And vice versa. Remember, right? But you don't notice it so much on the Ethernet because it's pretty darn fast. Now, this one, the 3B Plus went from 1.4 gigs to 1.6. There is a few changes. That was the 1.2 to 1.4, the gigabit Ethernet, and they added Wi-Fi with 5.8 uh, gigahertz in, not just the 2.8 gigahertz. Now, there is no microphone, but yet for a dollar nine, nine roughly, you can buy a US micro, USB microphone. It just plugs into any port of the USB. Now you have to have the software to use it, but still. Oh, this is two Raspberry Pi Bs pluses. Uh, I like the case. I use them. I have a full stack at home with hard drives and all. Now, it comes with a 3.5 millimeter four pin jack that can do audio output, but it also can do video, uh, composite video. Now, there is called a PAM, that's the DC to DC converter, 
It's also called a power input module. Depends on who's writing the information. Uh, it's the same chip. It uses both width modulation to control the voltages in the uh, Raspberry Pi. This is stuff just for reference, not that you have to know. Uh, and it also uses a uh, PSM, which is a pulse skipping modulation, to use lower power. Now these devices use about four watts maximum power. Now I use this quite often. It is a USB amp power meter. So when you put a load on it, the point of this device. You can see your voltage and your amperage, and then you put, plug your Pi in. I have one of these too. These are not required. They, the can of kits come with their own power supply. Okay. But these are nifty. I give some of those away at the breakfast one time. Not this one in particular, but some others. I got them for like 25 cents, and they usually sell for two or three bucks. But I was a high bidder. <laughs> How many do you want? Uh, I'll take 20. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. I originally started writing this material. Oh, let me get back a little further, back where I was. Uh, I need to... Okay, I have been able to get the Pi 3's one-time programmable memory set up. In other words, you can now use a flash drive to boot from you can put your operating system on a flash drive, and I've supplied everyone with a flash drive here that we would use. I went in and modified every Pi 3 I've got so that it automatically can boot from USB drive. It's just plugged in. Otherwise, it uses a SD card, micro SD card. And the micro SD card comes with it with the operating system. Now, what I have done or what I plan to do is we have the operating system as it comes from on the chip on the USB drive. We will install it, go through the setup parameters of it, and get things working, and then we'll do some exercises. Now, the USB drives I'm going to keep, but when you take the kits home, I hope that you get you a mouse and a keyboard. And uh, plug it into your TV, any, just about any TV or HDMI input. And you can use that to go and set up yours for how you want it to work. Now, I know I'm covering a lot of material, and this will be coming to an end shortly. Okay. I will go clockwise starting at noon on the design. There's the general input output ports at the very top. At the one o'clock is the one gigabyte RAM. It's located on the bottom. You'll see the copper I have here, but they're just a black chip. This is just a heat sink I put on. And then right beside, you can open up and look at yours if you want. Right beside the USB, here I've got mine covered up with a blue on this one. This is the LAN hub internet chip. It does dual duty. It does it well. I mean, 300 megabits is still pretty good throughput for something this small. It's about a 50% increase over what they had before. Uh, the audio jack is here. It also has composite output. It's a four pin audio jack or jack. So you can get composite plus audio out of it. It's not steering. Or you can have the audio come out through your TV. Now, it has a interface, that's what this little piece here is for, it has a, uh, you can attach a camera to it, I'm trying to think, take on verse 6, 
five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. You're on your way. It just has a roll yeah. ribbon cable attaches a camera. Oh, and you can use it for whatever you would like. I have a USB yeah, cool. camera on mine at home that takes a picture every minute of every day. You bring me some 24 hours a day, or seven days a week. Yeah. And it stores it on the oh, USB yeah. flash drive. Okay, but flash every 30 days, it erases the old ones. Right no, th anything over than 30 yeah. days old. So that way I have a month's record. Yeah. And occasionally it downloads to one of my other computers. Now, you have the HDMI port on that side. Right there. You want to look at it. Uh, now, here's the PM next to it. And it's actually right where the little micro USB port is. It's just on the other side of it. Real little chip. And that is also called a PIM, Tower Input Module. I think it's called a PIM, honestly, with the people that designed it. But it's called a PIM because of the uh, nomenclature of the chip. Okay, then we have on the bottom of the unit, see the little silver device there? Oh, okay. Okay, that's where your SD card goes in, and the fingers of the SD card must be pointed up toward the board. And they go to insert. They only insert one way. Then we have the uh, silver, canned silver module. They went over to that because they buy it as a module instead of designing their own. That way they don't have to have FCC certification on it. The people that make the module have that certification for uh, meeting those requirements. And that pretty much should take care of the chip. Now, if you go to the next page, you will see the general layout. And here I will open up any questions you got. From now on, everything's any questions you got. I just wanted to cover that particular material without interruption. And I've tried to label everything I could in there. So as you look at it, we'll start at the top and go around. See the general IOs, the four USB ports, the Ethernet port down in the lower corner, the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio output to composite video, the camera serial interface, the HDMI, the micro USB, the PAM, the PIM, whichever you want to call it. And then there's a digital interface display. You can take like a monitor from a computer and you can get a special module that you interface at that point and drive that monitor from the old dead computer. I've been thinking about taking one of my old uh, dead laptops gutting everything and putting a Raspberry Pi in it in one of these modules and just use the display that's built inside the uh, flat top. Yeah. Well, it's hopefully this is the same model. That way if you buy one module, I would only get one to try it. Oh, okay. It would be a little different. Okay. At this point, we're going to assemble the units. Okay, there should be a clear plastic case. Now it's a general input-output pins. If you want to, as an example, turn something on, turn it off. There is also a reset pin in there and a shutdown pin on that. That's uh, what I discussed earlier about some switches I had. I have a, uh, a modified version of this that comes out with two switches. One I hit for shutdown, one I hit for the Galaxy 2014. But you can... Yes, absolutely. Now, it can't drive a lot. It doesn't have enough current to sync a lot. 
So you would have to put an interface in there. Now there's also what's called top hat, top hats, so they call them hats, pie hats. And with that, you can get relay drivers, you can get all kinds of little things like that for games, which is what I'm understanding you're looking for. So, uh, and it can read fairly fast. Now, there's three parts to that. There's a top, a middle, and a bottom. Are you going to join us here? Who, me? Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Probably in a little bit.